Morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. We've just had a bit of a frantic Instagram live. You are like, I don't know what you're like. You're like a, a little an angel. uncontrolled explosion. Oh my God, I love that. I'm an uncontrolled explosion. Who did I liken you to last That's night? That's exciting. I liken Nadia. I don't know if anyone watches Vanderpump Rules. Yeah. You gave me a lovely um, review last night. Yeah, well, I said you were like Britney. Review? Yeah, of my character. Yeah. That, is that what you call it? Yeah, well, I'm yeah. saying that. Yeah. What, the dead of night? We that just had a moment, very, very <coughs> frantic Instagram live. <coughs> Mark wouldn't let me show everybody there. Oh, for there. God's sake. My it's nice not about drawer. not letting you. It's like, oh, I'm going to get also, my coffee. Mark has thrown water on his computer, lost his earbud. Last night, he must have put a, a split tea bag back in the tea caddy. I didn't. Somebody did. Yeah, it wasn't me. Domesticity through the summer. How's it going for you so far, guys? How right, are you so now? today. How's your tummy? I'm sat on the toilet. Oh, God. Right, I'm not going to go into any details. Thank I was on the toilet. God. Go to get the toilet roll. No toilet roll. Right, so then I'm thinking, how the hell am I going to get downstairs and get some toilet roll? Because nobody will bring me any. And then, Mark, that's really annoying. Put it down. Put it down. No, I'm going to hit you in the bonnet. Yeah. So, so then, so I'm like thinking, how do I get up and go to the loo? But there's a drawer in the cupboard beside the toilet, and somebody started a new toilet roll. Just put it on the drawer. Now, nobody in this house has ever, ever replaced a toilet roll. No, many, you haven't. Many, Mark. many, many, many. You times. balance it on top of the old many, toilet roll. Many, roll-up. many times. You balance it. Do you know what I, I do want... now? Do you no, know what no, I no. do now? Now when I use toilet roll, I place them. Did you see the one on top of the uh, curtain rail? The one, there's one on, on top the, of the curtain drawer, drawer nearly one. There's, there's one at the top of the ladder to the loft. Babe, you set yourself up to be wound up. Listen to me. You say you're not bothered by these things. If you're you bothered do, by silly you, things. You've become if you, old. If you've you, become old. You've become boring. It's okay, true. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. <laughs> Mr. Always on the bloody toilet. I'm going to take all the toilet roll. I'm going to keep it all in a hidden You're place. You're going to have to deal with Nanny Di. Where the Nutella is, and I shall take three sheets for myself. I know where myself. the fucking Nutella is. Well, no, you don't. Because yes, I do. Oh, There's no, you don't. two empty jars. Uh, 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 uh. Two empty jars. Yes, I've got we've them looked in them. and there's nothing in them. Oh, we've seen them and we're, we're hoping they fill your arteries. We've seen them and we're hoping they fill your arteries. <laughs> the two empty ones, because I'm well, sick of trying to help you with How your can they fill my arteries? I haven't touched them. You said empty. Yeah, but I don't know who's had it. I haven't had them. Well, anyway, that's boring. It's like you've if left you them there not, just to lure me in. If you do not to admit... tease me. Right now. Right now... Don't pretend that you are the, the only thing you ever do is put the toilet roll on like top of an old, empty toilet. I'm talking about toilet roll specifically. Right, I'm going to give you a straight piece of information here, right? <laughs> really straight, really, like, shiny. I'm about I'm going to tell to you something you. now. If it's not the truth, I'm going to give you a warning, right? I'm going to give you one, two, three. And if you are about to not tell the truth, right, you're going to regret it. And the revenge is sweet when it is cold, and it will come when you are least expecting it. If you are going to pretend now you put that toilet roll anywhere other than on top of an empty toilet roll, no, you're I'm, in trouble. I'm not talking about that toilet roll. I'm going to give you a straight-up <laughs> fact, because I have actually made notes in my notes... I have put, in the last month, over 50 what is empty he say? toilet cores into the bin downstairs. Oh my God, you are, you are... Oh, and on that note, have you ever emptied the bin in the downstairs toilet? Every single Never. time it's time for the dustman. Right. Don't give me this bullshit. We're going to move on. But if you would like to share right now an irritation that you are having, get, off, get it off your chest. Whether it be your teenagers, your toddlers, your husband, your <laughs> wife, your partner, Lee your Lee Doran, Mark is the only person who can make notes in his notes. I make notes <coughs> about notes in <coughs> the notes. Oh, mate. Look at these people that live on their own. Mate. So, look at these lucky people. They live on their own. Pixie Petal doesn't have a holder. It's on top of a small drawer unit where we store spares near the loo. Bin next. I don't know why you don't like, like spares. Somebody's got a change. Why don't you allow spares? Because you open no, I don't. I don't. My mother does. Okay. We need to build your mother a portaloo. Your <laughs> mother, right? She should we have her own portaloo. We are getting a portaloo for you and for your mum. You're each going to have a portaloo in the garden. 
No, my mum needs one. Somebody else will pop on a lighter note and come to see you at Sea and Food Festival. Well, you'll be seeing That'll be so lovely. Gonna, oh, it'll be nice. Come and That'll say hello. That'll be so lovely. Make sure you come up and say hello. Well, come up and buy me a coffee and, and I'll take you off for a drink and we can have a chat about these two. <laughs> Don't want to watch them squealing like nutters. Uh, we're live. Are we, again? Have, are we live on the Sunday? He will have no are time to do that. You are working. Are we live in the members area and are we... Curly cooking. Is yeah. it like Glasgow? There'll be one yeah, on the main channel and one in the... No, 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 That's no. It's really just... booming in my ear. You are fucking joking. <laughs> you are booming. You have come down here like a fucking bull in a china shop. Stop, stop, stop. I've had it. Stop, No, stop. I've had it. I've had it. I'm going to squeeze a lime on you. No, Mark, don't. If you squeeze it... I've just done my hair. If you squeeze it, Mark... Mark! Right! You'll go blonde. Right! Don't you dare. Yeah, right, that... Don't you, you dare. You better close your computer because it's coming Did at you. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> ah, Mark! <laughs> that, really, that was my ribs. That. Ah. God, I don't think I can do this today. No, no, I feel a bit stressed now. Mate. Jesus Christ. Mate. That escalated. That escalated. Should we just calm down now? Got it out. Oh, I'm soaking. Oh, wet. there's a shame. And I've got lemon in my hair oh, that I've just blonde. washed. Be nice. Isn't it so annoying the way men get these like beauty things so wrong? Oh, you if you just put lemon in your hair, you go blonde. Do you know how much work women have to put into having blonde hair? Yes. He still thinks people just put lemon on their hair and it goes blonde. I'm not a total twat. Mm, Maybe sometimes. you should put that in your notes, in your notes. <laughs> oh, okay, well, look, on that note, let's... Sh I want to share... <laughs> Good ship lollipop. Men have annoyingly accurate throws. Who <laughs> <laughs> said that? Good ship <laughs> Could have played for the MCC. Um, I just want to play something for you. Close your eyes. No. Close your eyes. Do you eyes. think I'm going to close your eyes? I'm going to close my eyes after you've just squeezed lemon on my head. No. I'm not going to do anything else to you. I'm not going to invade your space. Close your eyes. What are you doing? I want to play. Well, this I thought one. we were discussing this first. I just want to know. I'm play. going to tease you in. Listen to this. Mate. 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 How long will it take you to step in? This is a new campaign that has been, in fact, launched by Sadiq Khan. Uh, to combat sexism, where he's uh, this huge, huge thing, posters, billboards all over TFL, uh, where men, when they hear sexism in a group chat, should go, mate, and sort of try and pull them up about it. But before we, before we go away from it, I just want to share with you the other video that they've been using. Um, so the, the other strap line is, how long will it take you to intervene, mate? Well, you need to lay down the ground straight away. Is that what you did with that girl you took out in Shoreditch? <laughs> wow. Nah, nah, she, uh, she ghosted me. Probably wouldn't know a good thing if it slapped her in the face. Someone I'd gladly do if I saw her again. Mate, what did I do now? Stop! Just stop, man! You can't be saying that, bro, that's serious stuff. Obviously, I'd have to do it. Yeah, but just saying it is bad enough, man. You know that. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Oh, this guy can't get Sorry. Mate! So, this is the idea, uh, and this is a campaign all about encouraging men to say something when they're amongst other men. I, and, and so, yeah, what, what, what's your first response to that, Ned? My first response is... Like, what was the previous one that Sadiq Khan did? Oh, God, I can't remember what the last one was. We spoke about it. Yeah, like a it. code word, Minky Boo, absolutely. I, I know this has come under a lot of fire from feminist groups and saying that it demeans and belittles what women go through. But I actually think it's powerful. And I think he hasn't just plucked this up out of nowhere. I mean, he's worked with language specialists and all sorts of neuro whatever is. Um, this is, has been researched behind this. We can't ask people to take massive leaps into complete and into being completely different people with their, mm. with their, you know, peer groups or you know, with their colleagues. 
And I think we've got to understand that the small steps are, are the way forward. What is it they say? Slowly is the fastest way to get to your destination. And it, I mean, it's right to have the piss taken out of it, isn't it, mate? But it's just, it, it's so doable. You look at it and it's doable. Next time, somebody, a bloke saying something, you're really uncomfortable. Oh, mate. Oh, come on. You know, because the, the, maybe there's three other guys in that room that also think it's unacceptable. That might go, yeah. So it's just, I, I like it. I think it's subtle, it's small, but it potentially could be powerful. What do you think, guys? Um, I... <laughs> because I don't know what it feels like to be a man who has to continuously pretend that he agrees with all the other guys in the room or however many there are, you know, behaving in a certain way. I, I don't know what that feels like. I don't know how to say what to give them an entry point into making changes. Okay, well... So tell me what it's like. If there was, you were in a group of blokes and somebody said something like that, what well, would you... Okay, there were a number of things, a number of things about this that I think are really, really significant about what you're asking. Just, just before we get to that... There are a lot of people, a lot of feminists, a lot of women, a lot of people who feel that it's patronising and inadequate and a waste of money. Jane Smith, author of Misogynies, who also sat on uh, Sadiq Khan's board on violence against women, uh, described it as precisely those things. Um, I, OK, here's what I think about it. I think, so what did you just ask me? How difficult is it? it, it, it well, in okay, that situation... It's incredibly difficult. OK, so, I want, so, so you will have been Oops. through your life, but yeah. you're in situation. Obviously, now you're yeah. very sorted, you're mature, you're grown what? up now. But you will have been in situations where men would have said something yep. that you would have felt uncomfortable with. Yep. And you wouldn't have known what to say. I've been in situations... Well, let me answer that, yeah. ...where women have said things I'm uncomfortable and I don't quite know how to... <laughs> You know, and then you feel shit about yourself. Well, it's like, let it, stuff it, it, there are so many situations like this, aren't there? I mean, a classic one in London, unfortunately, and this is not casting all black cab drivers with the same brush at all, mm. um, but it's, uh, the amount of times I've got into cabs and yeah. you're met with, as a white person, a re well, that's why sometimes with racist commentary yeah. about people in London and the assumption, and it's a staggering that assumption that just because you're white and yeah. you've got in a taxi, you're going to agree with them. And so... I always find that is a moment where you either decide to push back and say something or say nothing. Um, I've done both. I've done both of those. I think, that going back to your question of how difficult... What if you got what... in the black cab and he said, cool, look at the arse on that. Oh, last night I gave my wife a rot, I gave her a good scene. I think more often than not, if men, if everyone is really practical, and I think this is more, says more about living in London and finding most things in London really abrasive and everyone not wanting to have to get involved in conflict or confrontation, the vast majority mm, of us all it. let it ride. I mean, I mean, and, I, and this you know, is non-confrontation. Nicole people, just said that anything is better than nothing. Anything is better than nothing. But going back to your thing, I think it's when I was young. I, it's an age thing. As you get, well, is it? As I've got older, I feel more and more able to say anything to anyone about anything. And that is an age thing. It's kind of like it's almost. It's like my mum. She walks down the street telling people off, and I'm like, mum, please be careful. You get mugged. Um, you know, you do what comes with age is a certain amount of, you've seen it all so many times, you can't be asked to tolerate it anymore, and you just say it as it but, is. I but think but you and as I a younger man, as a young can you man, imagine that? How would that have... I tell you, anyone well, this is my problem us. with this, and then I'll read out all your comments. My problem with this is, I think it's just going to be horrendously caricatured by all men. Everyone's going to be like, meh, I mean, like I was. I think it's going to... There's something about it that's easy to send up, unfortunately. Do you know what, though? Sadiq Khan keeps trying I know. This. That, that and I that's disagree. what yeah, I that keep I asking with. for. I keep saying, where are the men to help us with this? I, I can't remember. Can anyone remember the last campaign he did? Yeah. The advert. I really, really like that, too. It's all about for men example, challenging other men. And I just hate it when he gets shot down in flames because, because there is no big answer. There's no... There's no there's, there's, there's no quick fix. It's about trying to just gently change. And the thing is, I get what you're saying. A lot of people will take the piss. But what if it affects some people and then exponentially that then works? The ripple, the ripple effect, the ripple effect. 
I entirely agree. And I, I think you can't say, you can't have a go at something that's intentions are right. I mean, he hasn't just done this on his own. I know lots of people like to characterise Sadiq Khan as standing in a play, uh, playground yeah. doing all these things on his own. He has lots of people trying to advise him. I think his, his heart is in the right place. His ambition is absolutely right. He, he, I, he I, has I, ambition. I he, I, he has ambition yeah. to make things better for women on the streets. And I, I love him for that. But I do, I, you know, will this work? Well, it's like someone said here, you, you, how does the word mate fight centuries of toxic masculinity? But, but, but we're not trying to fight centuries of toxic masculinity. We're trying to give people small tools. Where's the toolbox to deal with this? My right? worry is that within... And it might not... Obviously, he's using the word mate, but it could be just... Oh, can I say something really, that really brutally? It's feeling of just going... Not being... Let me just finish. What the suggestion here is... You do not has to have to confront because that's too scary. That's too big a mountain Made a note to climb. Your birthday, yeah. That's too big a mountain to climb. Yeah. But is there a way that you can just ease into just going, ah, oh, that's not acceptable? Yes. Because it seems like people say, well, you know, it's just too dangerous for people to confront other people about this. And where does that leave them? But what about a sigh? What about. I think a terrible, fa a terrible fact of the matter is this is that I think that m all men know when they're in scenarios where they can and can't say something like this. And the strength sometimes of masculine whatever energy is that if you are in a predominantly strong, and I don't know if other straight men here would agree with this, when you're in amongst a lot of men, if the energy is such, you will not say something. If the Skate, you know, if you're in a group of football fans, if you're in a sort of, you know, quite an argy bargy situation, or if, I mean, you're in the pub with a load of men, you're all watching the football, and you were to be a solitary voice saying, mate, you could, you would be, inc it would be incredibly brave and right. But when I was in my 20s, I would have, I mean, we didn't have this language, we didn't Shy think like this. I would, well, I wouldn't have even considered it. I'd have thought this is an inner, I'm not going to convince anyone to change their opinion or behaviour. All that's going to happen here is, I'm going to be pilloried and I'm going to be characterised as an absolute fucking idiot. And actually... When you and this in is your a 20s. Yeah, yeah, when I was younger. And this is a pragmatism amongst men and I think probably amongst a lot of women in scenarios. And you're going to think to yourself, sometimes there are the unconvertible and you're in a relationship with them due to sport, due to an event, due to some party or whatever. And there's nothing you say or do is going to work. Where I've done it is when I've worked with people and they've said utterly utterly reprehensible things. The thing I've often turned to them and said is, you could be talking about my daughter. I don't appreciate it. I've said that many times. And, I, and it silences them because they forget that actually there are other men out there who actually have children, daughters, and you know, do you know what I mean? So there's that aspect to it. I think a much stronger, I mean, I think it's a great campaign. I, I, I think it's great that they're doing anything, but I do think that in the unconvertible realms of certain men, this is going to become something that if anyone were to pipe up and go, mate, they'll be absolutely laughed out the door, but, unfortunately. And it won't change But if it, it we won't take it anymore. too literally, but I think what we're saying here is here, you don't have to get into a fight. It doesn't have to be confrontational. And quite a few people saying here as well, don't laugh if something's not funny. I mean, that is very, very powerful. That's powerful. I think it was good Chip Lollipop and Aaron that said that. And, but do you know what? I think that's where I've been when I look back through my life, when I've laughed at things that aren't funny just so that I'm okay in the group. Yeah, Those are the places belonging. of shame, yeah. yeah. I yeah, Gra it Grace and Martin. But it comes with maturity, doesn't it, and confidence. Grace and Martin, I agree that something should be done, but let's not direct it all at men. I've heard women saying worse, and it's disgusting on both sides. I think it's really, I think it's really, I think for me... But the, men aren't threatened in the same way. It's not threatening, is it? I think, but do you know it's what? I would, I would go so far as to say... It, Yes, we're homing in on sexism, and absolutely, it's right. I think you. I think everyone finds themselves in social situations where we don't say what we really think because we know it goes. It goes against yeah. the sentiment of the group and the sensibility of yeah. what you're all trying to have there, which <clears throat> is often fun, which is often a nice afternoon. If you just think about if somebody said something nasty about somebody else, like just just, just somebody said something really unpleasant or really nasty gossip or whatever. And you're kind of like, hi, oh, you know, that, that, you know, mm. is, is also, it's just really, really difficult to stand up but, against somebody. But if, like you say, silence or a bit of, oh, come on, 
Oh, no. I mean, I've done that before when people have said something really bitchy about somebody. I've gone, oh, no, please, come yeah, on, yeah. with a bit of a smile. Yeah. And what you're doing there is showing... <clears throat> it happens the other day, somebody Lee. said something so nasty about something that somebody was wearing, and I just couldn't. I just couldn't laugh with it, and I just went, oh, don't, that's so horrible. Mm. But in no way was that confrontation. I mean, the other thing that happens yeah. for a lot of men is I don't, sorry. I don't hang out. Hmm? Yeah, sorry. Oh, I thought you were touching. I, I don't hang out in groups or in my life. I would avoid more and more group situations where I mean, I used to like football, but I certainly when I got, I certainly, you know, I ended up not enjoying the sensibility of groups of men getting argy bargy about stuff. Yes, there was some fun, and it doesn't always happen, of course, but. In any group of men, I mean, Lee Dorrant, look, also, how do we know men don't challenge other men? It's also hard to confront some men as it becomes confrontational. I think, I think it can become confrontational really quickly. And Nicole Gilroy, that's the point of this market, is to make sure there are no safe spaces for this type of sex. And I totally get it, of course. I mean, we've all been fighting sexism. I understand that completely. Um, but I think, I don't know, I just think, Sometimes it's easy to say why aren't to challenge men and say why aren't you doing more within your groups? For some men, and in a lot of male situations that I can think of, it could become immediately threatening yeah. for that person. I don't say it why. It could become aren't immediately you? violent. I completely that understand that. The thing is, what do you need to help you? Mm. What does society need to do together? so that can, people can feel... Because I, I totally understand that it's scary. Mm. Um, I mean, one of the best ways, and I think it's the most important, whenever I... If I think I've been in a group and certain things will be said, I'm, you know, and I'm having to go back a while now to when I, was, when I was drinking, there would be occasions where things would be said and you could kill it by just saying nothing. Yeah. Silence and is powerful. Literally, literally saying nothing, because the, the power of silence is also... Even a drunken idiot bloke friend finds it hard to get a handle on whether you're, you're what's wrong if you go and you just push on and you and they don't interestingly they won't go there again mm. you know what i mean mm. um so, and that's the same with gossip isn't it like, I, mean, yeah. I love a good gossip if you literally don't but there are some that. of those people that just won't engage at all and you think yeah. you, you sort of slope away feeling of like a really yeah. disgusting person but it's a lot it's interesting that a lot <laughs> of women and a lot of feminist observers are criticizing it so um so yeah, um, I, I realise I haven't pulled up the. Um, let me just find the uh, the what's his name Frank Skinner story. This this story. Have you got it on your phone? Um, oh, this one. Well, no, this is this is this is a very long, in depth article with Frank Skinner, and there's a lot of really interesting Frank stuff. Frank Skinner is in a there. comedian, uh, stand up comedian, yeah. British stand up comedian for our American viewers. Who's in recovery? Um, yeah, and. Uh, <laughs> He, one of the lines he says in it, which just made us laugh, this is more of a light topic. I want, yeah, but I want to ask a poll. Let's see if I get this say, right. He said, I always feel when men state that they're feminists or do yoga, they just want, they just want more women. <laughs> <laughs> so... Um, what do you think, Guy? I'm asking now. Well, I am a bit ashamed, and I am always admitting and always aware of where toxic masculinity has infiltrated me. But... I don't like it when men say I am a feminist. Don't you? No, no. I don't like it. I find it... Do you know what? I find it an ick. I don't want you to say it, do it, you know, show me, just be it. But don't say it. It doesn't... I don't like it coming out of their mouth. It feels do you know weird. What? I don't it think sounds I've ever, I don't weird. Think I've ever and I think, it of and the, No, you haven't, but you are absolutely... You are, you, you know... But because I, don't I, th because I think it. it's... Because I think there's something... Well, you believe in feminism. Yes. You're not a feminist, yes. are you? So yeah. when a man, whenever a man has said to me, oh, I'm a feminist, I know this isn't all for me. I'm really stereotyping here, so please forgive me. We can't get to in a, a way, place faith, in a where way, we can't have to... fun with a bit of stereotyping. Yeah, 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 yeah. In my lived <laughs> experience, <laughs> when I think back to men that have proclaimed themselves as a feminist to yes. me... They've been horrible. <laughs> <laughs> and not only that, they, I'm, I can see they're fat, they've been really stingy. Oh. One of them used to take a bottle of wine to all parties and put it in the oven when he got there and in then the take oven? it back out when he left so he could take it to the next party. What was feminist about that? Well, no, that he wasn't. That wasn't part of his feminism, but he was like that sort of a person. 
You see, for me, this feminist... It's like Marx says, this, vandals in vandals sandals. Vandals in sandals. <laughs> it's like someone who professes to be into such... Sometimes, not always, because I like fairies. But I find there are certain types of fairy lovers who are the most angry motherfuckers I've ever come across on the planet. They're angry little fuckers. And they might wear sandals and they might wear... They might, might have wings. About? What did you just say? I'm just saying fairies. there are some fairy lovers who are the most angry little motherfuckers I've ever come across. I've met them. They, they're just like vicious, but they masquerade behind this fluffy, glitzy, faux, pretend... <sighs> twinkle, twinkle, stardust, pixie dust. Fuck off. Hang I'm, on. Just want to say this. I, I think sometimes there are a lot of men who a little bit like the free love hippiedom, um, you know, it suits men to say this. It's part of toxic masculinity to conquer feminism and use it as a kind of, I don't know, a sort of I think medallion. that's a good question to ask. Can a man say, I am a feminist? I mean, it, what other... Can you say I am a feminist? Erin Bullimer, I doubt it. A man being a feminist is the absolute lowest bar. Believing in equal rights for men and women isn't something you should have to consider. Being a feminist is being a decent human being. Interesting. Um, I don't understand. I think what you're saying is it should just be a it should just be the baseline from where everything yeah. starts. Uh, to yeah. Just, so proclaiming like, it. Proclaim so what it. do you think of people that proclaim it? Erin? That was yes, yeah, Zoe. It's when they sit down and start chatting about women's rights on dates and I'm turned off. It's interesting, isn't it? No, I don't think a man can say that, absolutely not. It's Who interesting. Said that, Zoe it? said it's yeah. a turn off and Lee Durant says, no, I don't think a man can say that, absolutely not. Say that they're a feminist. I think it's a tricky one. It is tricky. Come on, I want some of your opinions. I think you need the to only help way, me challenge I think, me. I think the only way men should or could perhaps show their belief in feminism is just through action, right? Rather well, that's what Dawny says. Anyone can say whatever they want. It's the yeah. actions I look at. Exactly. Oh, there you go. But yeah. I have found in my experience that people that say it aren't it. And the men who I know and who, you know, who I respect and admire, like, like my dad. I mean, he's got a bit different as he's got older. But, you know, my dad left his country and wanted to have daughters, right? Wanted to have daughters. Now, remember, my dad's Arabic, right? He didn't want sons. He wanted six daughters, right? Just think about that. What a feminist act. But he would have never called himself a feminist. You know, in, um, in, in, in the Middle East, you know, every time there's another daughter, it's like, oh, not another daughter, you know, crying almost. But my dad wanted daughters and he came to this country because he wanted to bring up girls that could be whatever they wanted. So I just feel a bit emotional. Oh, no, just because my dad's so old now, but, you know, and to just be free. And we grew up with an Arab father that would say, just be whatever you want to be. Mm -hmm. Don't, you know, he, he never did any of this stuff of uh, you've got to be a doctor, you've got to be a lawyer, you've got to, if you do find somebody, always if you do, never when you get married, never when you have children. He, what, he is a true feminist. Now, still he has some old fashioned ideas for sure, but in his core, that's what I grew up with. I just grew up just thinking that this is how men are. So that is what I ask for. And that is what I want. And that's why I've only in like two occasions had situations or, you know, where, where the men that I were going out with for a short time weren't those kinds of people. I lost interest very quickly in men that weren't fair and weren't kind. And so that to me is a, is, is a man who really understands feminism. And to, to get out your guitar and your sandals and look deeply into a woman's eye and say, well, you know, I'm a feminist, it would just, I would like, run screaming. Mm. I've had people do that. Mm. Um, yeah, no, I mean, that's just, that's just weird. yeah. If you, you know, if Lots you of want... people here, Faith, Faith and Trina, yeah, talking about boys, of course. No, it's only because we, your experiences, are, we're talking about girls' experiences. It's not for, for a minute suggesting that, you know, what about boys, of course, you know. Um, but, uh, um, well, I would say the same. Yeah. Like, I wouldn't bring up my sons to say, I am a feminist. No. Because it's like we well, keep saying, did. you bring my... them up to just, just to, just to respect well, actually, that women didn't. and men are equal and you give the same respect to men and women. It doesn't you know have what? to be flagged up. I was up. quite lucky. I mean, because of course my mum was, it was radical feminism in, in the 70s. I mean, radical feminism in the 70s. And, and a lot of what came in that radical 70s madness was very unboundaried and kind of crazy and all that kind of stuff. 
But actually, my mum never tried to, in a sense, you know, not brain, brain, like, you know, she never tried to kind of mobilise me or kind of, you know, instill any of these values. It was kind of like through the process of osmosis. Like, you know, I learned actually, weirdly, I hope you don't mind me talking about this, mum, I learned a lot more about toxic masculinity from the way my mother was treated by the men she was with prior to coming out as gay. I mean, that's not to say there isn't toxic femininity within lesbian relationships, there is. But there was, it was, you know, I witnessed a lot of that and I learned as much of, from that. Mm -hmm. And I had questions around what someone stopped me and I was on abortion marches and all these kind of things all the time. So it wasn't kind of even sort of said to me, you should be this or you should be that. It wasn't like that. I suppose it was just by a process of that word that they said is not important, but is osmosis. Um, See, my dad as well, just, I'm just thinking about this. I'm going to talk to my dad about this later and just give him a big thank you, actually, because I'm just thinking, you know, the way that he brought us up, we were all, you know, we were very free, very, very free. And my dad used to get, the, the rest of the family, the Arabic family, would pull him up on that. Mm. And actually, when we're thinking about the intervening, mm. my dad was always, let them be who they want to be. Yeah. And you know, the other day when I was saying, that when I said what my dad's quote that he always says from uh, Khalil Gibran, children come through you, not to you. Mm. To be brought up in the Middle East and to, to have that belief that he doesn't have ownership of us, he just, they, we just come through him. Mm. It is, it's just massive. Mm. And I could just realising how why so much of, you know, that's where I'm informed from, I suppose, on this, on this topic. And I yeah. think what we're coming to and what we're arriving at is that if you do feel you have to say it, I don't think... Yeah, yes, I think, that's, that's, that's yeah. exactly it, Erin. Erin. Feminist is just a decent person. A real feminist... So it's down the bottom. A real me. feminist wouldn't use feminism to impress. Your father's a feminist. Fe your father's a feminist, but he doesn't need to say it. Oh, Erin, oh, I'm going to tell my dad that you said that. Yeah, that's very, that's very true. And I think what we've discovered in this conversation is that if you have to say it, name it, or define it, or pretend you're it, or not, by, by identifying it too much, it's clearly not just in you as a natural place. But I would go so far as to say, I think we have to cut some people some slack because I think some people, some men will be coming from of backgrounds course. where it's hard to grapple with this stuff. Yeah. And they'll think that by embracing a change in their family life from their father, from their parents, whatever, that by naming it and identifying, I don't think it means that everyone who says they're a feminist isn't and they're looking for a woman. But I do think we, I can think of those people who, who I can see the type who uses it to kind of go, hey, 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 I'm plugged into women's rights, just as you rightly say, Zoe. Um, Amfran, hope you're well, mate. Um, it's the same as anything in life. Show it, don't say it. I tried that last night, got me into all sorts of trouble. <laughs> Mark! <laughs> okay, finally, um, just a quick quick reference out to Katie Price. She's in trouble again. Or she could be in trouble again. She keeps driving when she shouldn't drive. She's been seen coming out, looking glum, coming out of a, a police station with a vape in her hand. This has happened again. And she's been pulled over for driving without a license or insurance. She claims that because her insurance is £14,000, uh, and that will be because of the many other kind of, you know, driving offences that have happened, um, she's, she says that it's a, a form of daylight robbery. Um, I don't know. I, is, there, is there a way of... Is there an intervention that can be done that just stops you from getting in a car? Do you know what? We were watching Vanderpump again last night. Uh, it's our wine. Other people have a glass of wine, we watch Vanderpump. Um, and there was a character in there, in, in the episode last night, who had been done for a DOI. DOI and um, she had this little machine that every time oh, she yes. got in the car, she had to blow into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did it then allow or not allow the car to turn on? What I'm not entirely it? sure. I'm not entirely well, sure if the they car then... had its own. But not only that, every 15 minutes she has to stop the car and blow into this mm. machine mm. to prove that she wasn't drinking. I thought, mm. my God, that would be so irritating, wouldn't it? Yeah. I don't know whether that goes straight to the police station. I remember when we were in America and we were driving... Oh, to Vegas. We were driving to Vegas, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The longest road, as far far as the eye can see, in front of you and behind you. Well, they had radar. Nobody. Radar. Not a single car, right? And then 
out of We were of doing nowhere. about five. We were doing, you know, in America, the, the speed limits are very low. And we very were about low. 10 miles. And like it was nothing. a long drive from Los Angeles oh, to Las Vegas. Oh, my God. And then suddenly, a police car arrived mm. out of nowhere. I've never him? been so scared. Do you remember him, though? I was petrified. Yeah. He lent in and he let us, he didn't give us a ticket because he said we had, we were America's allies in the, in the yeah. Iraq war. You're British. I don't want it to be said that I've ruined a, a British family's holiday. holiday. You're our allies. But I was like, oh my God, we're going to be taken off. But, 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 but that, they were just told by satellite yeah, that yeah, there yeah, was yeah, a car yeah, that yeah, was yeah. going five miles over. So, I mean, I don't T. know. T.Y., I love Katie Price. Why does she keep doing this? I don't know. Self-sabotage. She was on a podcast the other day talking about her low self-esteem that she needs help. Also, I don't think she can be surprised. I mean, you know, in, you know I've obviously, I, I, was, I had a... A drink driving offence many many years ago. It was part of my rock bottom getting sober. And your penance is in high insurance costs once you get back out of it. You know they've completely got back to normal. This is this was like twenty years ago. But you know these things deserve punishment. They deserve some kind of um, and someone somewhere has to stop her. I feel I'm you know that, that I you know that I I like Katie Price and I think she's I think she's a good person and I think she's had I think she has had so many horrendous things happen and you know like she says she's had addiction problems she's I think she has a lot of stuff Morning going tears. on but I do think you know and I was really pleased when she didn't go to jail I was really pleased for the last time but you have to have something in place and and they you know this is an unaffordable amount of insurance for a reason i agree for Ella a Jones. reason isn't it and it's just like it's just about just, learning your lesson i don't mind i mean you, you just want to go yeah. you just want to go oh katie just don't just don't just don't just don't but you know i suppose if you it's very easy isn't it as well living in the city but 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 you know people like you know people that we know you know live out in the countryside you get a ban it's a nightmare but just unfortunately you've got a bloody stick mm. to the ruling mm -hmm. and i just yeah i do worry i do worry um and yeah. finally 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 uh, i've got a welcome to do it. and pat 1176 we're going to sing you happy birthday just to say we can't ignore the the fires again um tra la la who's one of our followers is currently in crete and uh, crete is now on a level five Hi, fire fire emergency i don't know if you're watching tra -la -la, so we're sending you uh, you both have love. And, you know, uh, near Heraklion, they're on red alert. So, That's where and we in you. Sicily, apparently the airport in Sicily is surrounded by wildfires too. I think we talked a little bit about this. Oh, hang I, on one second. Somebody there's saying they use those machines in their area and it automatically locks the car. Oh. If you've got a breath, if you've got... Oh, that's good. Wow, that's good. I've never heard of... That's no. Linda Fissett. Thank oh, you for that, thanks, Linda. Linda. Um, yeah, so, um, what's that? I forgot to remember. Um... What's I saying? Sorry. Sorry, the fires. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so, no, no. So, the, it's this idea that, you know, fires are spreading. I heard someone really interesting today on the radio saying, again, talking about how Just Stop Oil seemed to be kind of losing the kind of PR game massively. They made an interesting point when they said they really are tackling... This was someone who was kind of like, you know, talking about the wildfires and saying, we've got to look at the fact that this is clearly connected to climate change you know lots of scientists are saying this scientists are warning you know today there's a piece in sky news saying you know that scientists are saying that the heat wave and the increase in fires etc etc is all about climate change and global warming um and it was an interesting thing someone said that just stop oil and and you know need to get a grip on the fact that we are all actually more aware than they like to think of the incoming crisis this isn't about people being you know, not motivated, if at the point that Just Stop Oil stand on the streets and protest, everyone else hasn't stopped at exactly the same time. Everyone's trying to live their lives. You know, I, th I think what he was trying to say was there is general awareness, but they're managing to antagonise that awareness, weirdly. I mean, it's... I'm, I'm getting really frustrated that the kind of climate change lobby, which is really important, Greta Thunbergs and all that lot, you know, they're, they're getting kind of sidelined as kind of eccentrics because they're mis they seem to be confused in the way that they're trying to flag this up to us. But anyway, I just, wanted, I just wanted to say, you know, how we can pretend that the climate change issue isn't an issue as the planet is going up in flames, quite literally, is beyond me, absolutely beyond me. But all of our, all of our thoughts go out to Greece, not just from a, um, you know, the, the fire perspective, but, but economically. 
I mean, the tourists don't. I mean, people in Rhodes are already talking about their fears for next year's holidays. So, um, you know, all of that. Um, I'm going to you've suddenly gone incredibly quiet. I was listening to oh, you. All right. Um, let's say, uh, let's give a welcome to Claire Scott, family guest. Welcome. Welcome, Claire Scott, to the family guest area. Welcome, Claire Escort, to the family guest area. And you too, Tez. Welcome back. Welcome back. And happy birthday to Pat1176. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. you. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. you. Happy, happy birthday, dear Pat1176. <laughs> happy birthday to you. And a happy birthday to Polly. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Polly. Happy birthday to you. We went on a journey with this with this coffee morning. We started with lemons. We squeezed them. We said, mate, you ran around. You poured water all over me. And look at us now. Nadia desperate for the loo. <laughs> and guys, don't forget, this Curly Cooks this week is live on Thursday night at 7 o'clock. And it's a Barbie extravaganza, pink food, and I've got the most amazing costume for Mark. Oh, and finally, go back to last weekend's Curly Cooks. In, and in the middle of the Curly Cooks, uh, we announced the two winners of the £25 um, supermarket Tesco vouchers. Batch. So do go back. If you're thinking, oh, well, they, you know, they were announced in the show and we're still waiting for those get people in touch, to get in so touch. So we can send you your voucher.